The Detroit Lions now have the sixth and 18 picks, 18th picks in the NFL draft, and they did not make the playoffs. However, have when's the last time you have felt this good about the Detroit Lions, Bradley? Megatron years? But the thing is, I didn't but even, even then, I, didn't, I, I was going to say, I, I was like, oh, <laughs> Matthew Stafford <laughs> is like uh, amazing. He gets no credit in the media because they don't win playoff games, but really the entire team is Megatron and, uh, and, and, uh, Matthew Stafford, and that's it. Oh, and yeah. then it's not, and at one point, Dominican Sue was dominant for them. But even then, it was that it, it was trash. It's it it was it was that those teams were defined by having like you know uh, it's you could you could actually trace this back even further. I mean, going back to even Barry Sanders. Yeah, the Lions have been characterized by having good like some honestly between Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson. Mm-hmm. Two what like once in a generation players surrounded by a bad team right. that can't win. Yeah, and this this I think has been probably in the you know this might be the most optimistic outlook for a Lions team in like potentially their entire franchise. And I just felt so good about them going into Green Bay, kicking the shit out of the Packers, winning that game, and dirty, being like, galvanized. Cold- game up in lambo yeah being galvanized to do it with literally nothing to play for yeah knowing that mo- knowing that the game before they were eliminated from the playoffs and, and, and still wanting to and still wanting to stick it to the packers st- and, and, and like yeah. you said f- freaking dan campbell looked like rudolph his nose was so red it oh was yeah freezing i mean they 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 to seal the game they pulled this cr- a hook and ladder. Yeah. To DeAndre, that ultimately went to DeAndre Swift to clinch the first down, and they won. I was like, these guys are not just playing to make the playoffs. They're not just playing for a winning record. They're just playing because they want to win. They're playing for each other, and they're, they're, and they're playing they, for their coach. And they're playing because I think they're excited about what yeah. their future holds for them. They have, as they should be. They have gotten to believe again, and or maybe for the first time ever, and that is an intoxicating thing. They were playing like a top 12 team in the end. They were playing like a playoff team. For, and, um, if they hadn't gone one and six, they should. I mean, I'm, I'm like sick that the Seahawks are in and not them. It should have been the Lions. That would have been the Lions. Lions 49ers actually would have been a, would be oh a fun God, game. It would have been a very uh, just just to uh, in terms of offensive scheming. It would have been fascinating to watch. It would have been bonkers. But yeah. also, but the, what, what I'll say is that I just think there's so much to so much. The, there, well, the, I'll get to my one wrinkle of hesitancy before I but, but I'll go to the positives first you have jamal williams as being one of the most reliable goal line backs in the entire league he also just seems to be a true mention of a guy he just seems to be a hilarious fun i'm obsessed with him uh, i hope he awesome has guy. like an amazing um, media career after his playing oh i think yeah, I, I think he will De- yeah. DeAndre, deandre swift another reliable great back who offers something different than mm-hmm. that of williams you have a i would say arguably you know on the cusp of being a second team all pro receiver and amon ross st brown this year oh, yeah um DJ Chark, Jameson Williams as a rookie who will now you will now then in the in the coming season have a fully healthy season from him. In turn, and then then also he was the best receiver in the draft. He just wasn't able to play, he just wasn't and healthy. he was still getting yeah. his feet under. Like, look out for him next year. Look exactly. out for him next. year. Truly, I I completely agree. And yeah. The, and then the other and the other thing is, most importantly, even if Jared Goff is not ultimately the answer at quarterback, you have a fantastic center in Frank Ragnow. And a guy who I absolutely believe will be one of the best offensive linemen of our of this generation of players in Penny Sewell. Mm-hmm. That pick, at first, obviously there was much debate between whether it should have been Jamar Chase or Penny Sewell in that draft. I don't think anybody went wrong, and I think it's I think at first there was some concern about that. I was concerned. But, I thought that they should have. Go- I thought the Bengals should have gone with him because I was like, look at what happened to. J- Joe Burrow, exactly. but it was that was a win-win situation. It was for a, both a, teams. a shockingly win-win situation yeah. when in a kind of sliding doors, you know, draft yes, draft yeah. moment. But Sewell is essentially like a has the athleticism of like a basketball player <laughs> in a three hundred and thirty-five pound body. Yeah, and he's also a he's twenty-two years old. Yes. maybe he's he, he's he's a child, mm-hmm. and so and he's already playing at this level. So I just think on the offensive side of the ball, there is so much to be encouraged about. 
And I think whatever they if they if they're able to find a higher ceiling asset at quarterback, that'll only make things even better. And then, but the only concern I have is the brain drain because I just do think inevitably Ben Johnson will be poached to be a head coach somewhere else. I'm confident Aaron Glenn is a defensive coordinator. I think I think he makes those guys play hard. They have they have one of they have one of the lowest. Uh, defensive spend rates in the entire league that will change. They, I think they will be able to get better and improve on defense. My main concern is once Ben Johnson leaves, does that cr- offensive ingenuity leave with him, or can they can they continue and build upon that without him? Yeah. So that's those are my two concerns here. I, they have great vibes, like pretty much nothing, nothing to complain about going into the off season. Um, the they they will face some challenges next year i do think that their uh oc is going to get poached by some team that wants like their next whiz kid yeah because because in my view if i had to make a prediction whoever if 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 we're operating under the supposition that sean payton and jim harbaugh will be nfl head coaches next year and obviously we don't know that i'm just mm-hmm. saying if we're assuming that i think whoever's the runner-up in those sweepstakes whether it's the cardinals whether it's the panthers um someone like whether whether if if Josh McDaniels is ultimately not the coach like yeah. you know if 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 something like that i think whoever doesn't get those they guys they can't fire will, him they're too cheap so yeah we'll will probably will <laughs> yeah. we'll, t- we'll take ben johnson i think ben johnson is the next guy after after those two. i think he's definitely getting hired um i'm praying that Mike my, my kafka does not get hired cuz he just interviewed uh, with two teams but the only other person i would say is Shane, Shane Steichen from the eagles that's probably the only other Demico oc Ryan's also. Demico Ryan's, i mean if but you're OC, looking for yeah. yeah in terms but, of ocs but, yeah, yeah. but my point here is that i'm a little worried that the lions are gonna and it's hard to let go of jared goff i know that because the teams rallied around him and you've won with him Right. Don't do it, guys. You have two picks in this draft. Try to get the first overall pick from the Chicago Bears. I know in division rival, that's hard to do, but I, I, I think you should try to reset at quarterback. Right. People don't. I, I, I know that there's a lot of momentum to not do that, but there's a lot of quarterbacks that could succeed with that OC, with those weapons behind that offensive line. And my concern is that this is a, the opportunity for to set you guys up to be like a perennial playoff contender if you fall in love with one of the quarterbacks in the draft. So I really hope that this whole like we're sticking with Jared Goff thing is a smoke screen screen because we know we know what the limitations of Jared Goff are, even though he's having a very good year it's just that I don't think that's smart team building. And I'm hope- hopeful that Brad Holmes sees that because everything else he's done, the moves that he's made, even treating TJ Hawkinson, who they right. have all these other tight ends on their, on their roster. That they're yeah, playing great. It's not as, it's not as if Brock Wright was necessarily a huge downgrade. <laughs> even he still was playing pretty good football. They know the- that, you know, they, they, they couldn't, they don't want to pay him and, and they got a second round pick out of it. Exactly. That's great. So, um, everything that they've done has been great. Uh, I just I want them to pump the brakes a little on Jared Goff for the long term future of the team. 